Uh, thank you, Julian. Thank you very much. Um, I have to begin with a confession, which is that I'm not a business person. Um, and I, I have to kind of, I don't know, this is uh, slightly dangerous territory, but I have to observe that at a festival of commercial creativity, when um, if I'm the best you can get as a business person, I think uh, there is something dangerously low about the standards of commercial creativity in this country. Um, particularly, obviously, when it comes to anything involving thinking. Obviously, there's been plenty of business people involved in other things that weren't thinking related over the last couple of days, I assume. Um, uh, now that we've lost a speaker, it's only two of us, so it's, it's even scarier how, how shallow the um, talent pool is for business thinking. Um, but from, what, from my part, I'm, I'm not particularly businessy. Um, my work involves various hats that brings me in touch with business at various times and in various ways. Um, but I, 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 for the purpose of today's discussions, I guess I have to set aside the fact that I'm notoriously bad at making any money out of anything I do. So um, let's just ignore that. One of my hats is that I direct the International Symposium for Electronic Art, which is a festival that's going to take place in various venues around Sydney next year that will bring together a couple of thousand of um, uh, the world's leading digital artists, uh, experimental practitioners, cutting edge, bleeding edge, uh, media makers and artists, including in this very venue in June next year. In my other life, I run a national social enterprise called Renew Australia. And um, Renew Australia began off the basis of Renew Newcastle. Um, essentially, what we do in Renew Australia is that we take otherwise empty uh, vacant shops, offices, commercial spaces around the country, and we make them available to incubate creative initiatives such as designers, artists, photographers, media makers, uh, coders, DIY publishing businesses, and much more. Um, this work involves a lot of working with business, um, with cities, with property owners, with property developers, um, and uh, Renew Australia has actually been set up as a trading uh, social enterprise. So we are meant to make money out of what we do, but we're in the very early stages of that and we're not quite there yet. So um, I'm, I don't want to really set the bar too high. Now, it might seem a bit odd that I'm running both a cutting-edge global international electronic arts festival and a low-cost DIY regional revitalisation scheme that's rolling out in places like Newcastle and other, other places. But really, they're actually both very much part of the same continuum. It's one that has been brought on by technological change, but it's not particularly about technology. Um, in, in thinking today about a big idea for a battle of big thinking, um, I started with the one particular big idea. I've been trying to find a big idea to wow you with. Um, I kept returning again and again and again and again and again to the one idea I can't get out of my head. And it's the same idea that has fed into Renew Australia and has come from all of the other things I've been involved in. Put simply, it's this. Big ideas suck. Big ideas are the exact opposite of how you should think about things in the world. Um, Renew Newcastle is a classic example of what con can happen when you stop thinking about the big idea. Newcastle um, has 150 empty buildings in the main street. It is not a place that is suffering for lack of master plans and grand development ideas. There have been so many mega visions, so many grand ideas, so many makeovers, doing artist illustrations of fictional developments that might happen in the centre of the city that will change everything has been one of the biggest growth industries in Newcastle for the last decade. Um, Renew Newcastle only really came into being because we looked at it from the exact opposite ends. Um, um, you know, if you were to track the rise and fall of the city around what well, the front page headlines in the Newcastle Herald, um, you would think that the fortunes of Newcastle f f rise and fall on things like whether someone had an idea of building Sydney's um, second airport, basically right on top of the Newcastle CBD. That one had traction for about six months. Um, uh, there is no lack of coal loaders that have been proposed. There's no lack of mega, mega fast trains and public transport solutions. Um, a new steelworks was in the offing for a while there, and nothing ever really came of that. Um, no manner of grand, there's no failure for lack of grand developments here. But if you look at it from the point of view of what I did and what Renew Newcastle did, the problem is not with the big picture. The problem is with the small stuff. We looked at Newcastle up from street level and not down from a map or a master plan or someone's big vision. We looked in the windows of the 150 empty buildings that were lining the main streets, um, and we thought, uh, I thought personally, and I knew that hundreds of other people in Newcastle had looked in those same windows with ideas for things that they might do in them. Small ideas, not big ideas, many small ideas. In the last three or so years, um, we've managed to lure out of the community in Newcastle 
something in the range of about 500 small idea proposals for things that people want to do in those spaces. And we've made about 80 of them happen. There's 40 or 50 buildings that were empty in Newcastle four years ago that are full now as a result of Renew Newcastle's projects. They're either our projects that are sitting in those spaces or they are um, projects that have come in following the foot traffic and the life and the activity and all of that stuff that the, the kinds of projects that we've involved in have brought life back to the city and been a catalyst for. Um, many of these projects are viable community assets. They're artist-run galleries, they're studio complexes, um, there's a food co-op, there's a whole range of things that have started in these empty buildings. Um, uh, but a lot of them are not overtly community-minded projects. A lot of them are simply businesses. Um, and some of them are now thriving standalone businesses. They're fashion designers, they're photographers, they're media makers, they're artisans, they're craftspeople, and many more. Um, people have argued for a long time that in order for Newcastle to become an interesting place um, to attract tourists or attract development, what it needed was a big catalytic mega-project. Um, by approaching it from the opposite end, um, Lonely Planet uh, last year brought out their list of the top ten cities in the world to visit in 2011, and number nine is Newcastle. And I know for a fact that Sydney's never been on that list, um, and I know for a fact that if you're all from Sydney, none of you have ever been there. Um, Newcastle's great, and the reason Lonely Planet cited Newcastle was because of the plethora of small-scale interesting things that you could find there not because of some grand iconic development that, was, um, uh, that had led the charge. Um, usually I tell this story with lots of kind of jaw-dropping, impressive before and after pictures of empty buildings in Newcastle. I decided not to do that today. I decided not to do it for two reasons. One is um, uh, that I have a tendency to just kind of tell the exact same story when I show the exact same pictures. Um, and the other one was, uh, and I wanted to talk about some underlying ideas today, the other one was that I was actually just too lazy to get my shit together and get my slides in order. So, instead, um, I, I, I leave it to your imagination, or you've all got, like, you know, Google-connected devices, I'm sure. Google Renew Newcastle while I'm talking. Look at the projects pages, look at the stuff that's been happening, and see what we've been able to do there. Um, but the simple fact is, while I, I, I want to sort of talk about the, the bigger idea. Um, for fear of talking about a bigger idea. The simple fact is, while globalisation is seemingly making, is seemingly everywhere and inescapable, ours in many respects is not the age of the big. It is actually the age of the smaller and more connected. Um, it's the age of the atomised and the interdependent, of the swarms, of the herds, of the independently acting, of people, of, of many small things adding up to bigger pictures. Um, we aren't in the industrial top-down era anymore. We are in an era where many more people have many more, much more agency to make things for themselves. And Renew Newcastle is a classic example, um, as have many other projects I've been in, of how creativity, culture, following on from communications, have become more decentralised. Um, um, the small, in many respects, is getting bigger. We have digital cottage industries that now have global markets for what they do. So many of the people that we found and put into empty shops in Newcastle were already living and working there and had export businesses all around the world, but they didn't have a presence on the main street. That's the paradox of the era that we live in. Um, if I was to point out to you that one sector of the Australian economy and society had grown about 900% over the last decade, what would you be guessing on? I would assume people are going to punt for mining or something like that. Now, the answer is, if you can't guess, is um, independent jewellery making has grown 900%. There were 25,000 of them in 2001, there were 200,000 of them by 2007, and that growth rate seems to be, be uh, continuing. Jewellery, uh, you know, the, the percentages look great in jewellery because it's coming off a very low base, but you could actually argue exactly the same thing from any f independent form of creative production. If you look at fashion design, crafts, visual arts, home-based record labels and music studios, um, any of those areas uh, have grown in the hundreds of percent over the course of the last decade. Um, I have a thesis which will hopefully scare the living shit out of all of the marketing people here. Um, while there's a long way to go, there's this curve where um, I think creation is gradually overtaking consumption as the way we occupy ourselves. And I think this is a very good thing. Um, it's, it's amazing to see the raw numbers and the percentages and the trends in the ways in which people are actually occupying their time, the things that they're making and doing. Um, these are growth rates that frankly make the Chinese railway engineers nervous. The Chinese rail network is not growing as fast as DIY cultural production in Australia. Um, 
it, um, it makes the mining industry look just pedestrian. We are living in the era of the many and the small. Um, it's an age of, a, of the niche. You can talk about long tails, you can talk about the rise of um, aggregators, and that's a very big factor, whether it's your you know, Etsy's or your Ebay's or your um, iTunes, which facilitate a lot of this activity. But Apple, as a bazillion dollar behemoth, um, its value is really bound up in the diversity of what you can get through iTunes or through the App Store or, or, or all of the opportunities that, are making, that is making for independent creative practitioners. Um, Google is only useful because it helps you find all this small stuff. And the small stuff uh, um, is what I'm becoming obses increasingly obsessed with. I'm increasingly obsessed with, uh, and Renew Newcastle is an exercise in thinking about how we make the small stuff work better. Our real channel challenge is not to design the big or demand the big. Um, any knob can draw up a beautifully fictitious master plan of some perfect development, um, and you can wait forever to see that come into being. It probably won't, if Newcastle's anything to go by. Um, usually, by the time that it does come into being, it's been bounced around so much by the market and the political process and everything else that it bears absolutely no resemblance to the master plan you started with anyway. Um, I have a different question. My question is, how do we make our physical communities behave, start to behave more like our virtual ones? How does um, place meet the expectations of people who have grown up in a society of abundant diversity? How do you start to mimic things like the low barriers to entry, the low cost of failure, um, the premium that is placed on experimentation, innovation, and discovering what works by doing it that um, is what uh, characterises the online creative world? How do we make that... Um, work in our physical spaces? How do we make our, um, our, our community start to behave and look and act more responsively to that? Um, I've just spent three weeks travelling around North America and every time I look out my hotel window I see a McDonald's, a KFC and a Subway. Um, but the flip side of that is that our virtual communities, our cultures and our expectations are becoming more diverse and more diversified. We increasingly expect diversity. And yet, um, we, we, we've got this kind of bottleneck in our kind of built form and, and creativity where we don't cater for it at all. Um, have you noticed the explosion of farmers' markets, designer fairs, maker fairs, food trucks? To me, these are all indicative of people looking for places where there are low barriers to entry to physically manifest this kind of creative activity. Um, Renew Newcastle is an exercise in trying to make that work on a city-wide scale. Um, but the, the, the challenge, I think, is... is is the small. It's not about the big ideas. The challenge is how do you cluster the small? How do you focus it? How do you seed it and feed it and give it space to grow and an environment that is conducive to allowing it to grow bigger and better, um, that creates for competitive dynamics where there's low risk of, low cost of failure, so many more people try many more things. And Renew Newcastle, if anything, is an exercise in getting a shitload of people to try things. And the net effect of a shitload of people trying things is that you get an interesting um, uh, series of things left over. Um, the challenge is how we do that in, in a society where we have tried to push everything towards the bigger and grander scale, where everything from um, our production, our marketing models, to the physical size and shapes of our places and spaces uh, are driving towards bigger, more centralised, um, more capital-intensive uh, approaches. The key challenges for cities is how do we make the small work? In New South Wales, I think you're actually starting to see the payoff of a little bit of this thinking. Um, you can see it through things like Renew Newcastle, but if, if you live in Sydney, um, you can see it through the changes in the licensing law and place of public entertainment stuff that has happened in the last few years in New South Wales. Um, I was peripherally involved in that as campaigns. Um, they are absolute examples of the benefits of thinking small. For a long time, it was physically impossible to start a small-scale venue that meant the economics of venues in, in New South Wales were driven towards a certain kind of mass production. Experimentation, diversity, um, all of that incubation process was physically cut out by the laws and um, the processes that, that guided it. Um, I, I think that's a sign that things are changing, but I think it's only the beginning. Um, we've so long been obsessed with the top-down, big-picture um, approach, I think it's, we've almost entirely forgotten about the bottom-up. Uh, whether it's a hangover from an industrial era or because we're an obsession with um, numbers with lots of zeros at the ends, or because governments, planners, politicians, business leaders and those in charge are always looking from the top down. The reality is we have really fucked up the small stuff in this country, and particularly the state. 
and we need to find ways to start doing that, um, getting that better again. So get down off your big ideas, give up your grand plans, come back to street level, look around and look at what people are doing and de developing. Put simply, uh, my argument is, think small. Let's get the small stuff right and then we can argue about the big picture stuff. Thanks.